Now, when the enemy comes to attack you, you need to remember what we're equipping you with, that God loves you, you're his child, and God's pleased with you. And I'm telling you, it's going to help you in this life. And now I want to bring you back to a very familiar passage of Scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to go all the way down to verse number 32. If you're in your Bibles, flip the page or find verse number 32 of 1 Samuel chapter 17. David has come into the camp. He's heard Goliath roaring out his insults. And, and David has told people, well, I'll, I'll go take care of him. And, and, and I don't want to get into all the reasons for why he said that, but, but some of them were very selfish. And, and, and David is taken before the king. And here we hear David speaking to the king. Here he says, I want you to get this, he says, Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And he's been a man of war since his youth. Now, I have a lot of problems with people who just read that passage and take it totally out of context. They had preached that David was just a boy going to fight a giant, but they've left out the whole previous chapter that says that David has gone into battle and has become a warrior already at this point. But there's some truths that I want you to see here based in what Saul says and what David says. David said, I can. Then Saul reminded him of his past. David reminded and informed Saul, or he, he said, let me just inform you, Saul, of my present. And then he trusted God with his future. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit already. Listen to me one more time. David said, I can Saul said, you can't. This is who you are. David informed him, no, 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 that's who I was. This is who I am. And then he trusted God with his future. You see, we all face situations in which we wonder if we can measure up. In the story of David and Goliath, much has been talked about the armor that he put on and the different, different things, and we could go many different directions. My, my favorite is what really took him on the battlefield, and, and, I, and, and I really don't want to take much time there, but, but he understood that if he went on the battlefield, it could give him a better life. He would be rich. Uh, he would be the king's son-in-law. That means he got to marry the good-looking princess. Come on now, amen. And, and he, he had, uh, his father wouldn't have to pay taxes anymore. So daddy's going to be happy with me. I got a beautiful wife, and I'm going to get a lot of money. That's what his motivation was, read the Bible that's what it was David said you know what look at my life there's not a lot going on but I will give that up for a chance at something better can I tell you something that the riches of this world are not worth fighting for but the riches of heaven are worth fighting for and God's looking for somebody who's getting ready to fight tonight you see we all face situations in which we wonder can we measure up but here in this this story of David and Goliath I, I, a lot of people have talked about the stones that David went down by the brook and picked up. Five stones. I've heard people make all kinds of allusions to what they were. Somebody said it could be the fivefold ministry. Somebody said it could be prophetic of, of many things. I, I think it could be a possibility that some people said that it could be because Goliath had so many brothers and he was getting one stone for each of the brothers. But I really believe it could be a really deeply spiritual thing. It could be he got extra stones in case he missed. Come on now, in case he missed. But he, whether or not he got five stones for prophetic reasons or because he wanted to be uh, amply supplied with ammunition, here's the truth that I want you to get. The stones were not the only thing he carried in his bag. There were two other things with him in his bag. Are you ready for this? His past and his present. When he stepped onto the battlefield, what he had carrying with him was his past and his present present now I want you to understand a few things about the past of David and why it comes screaming at him in this moment many people believe that Saul has never encountered David at this point but once again they've skipped the 16th chapter of 1st Samuel Saul has encountered David before 
Saul has called for David as David has been called to live in the court of the king. David has been anointed to be king. Saul doesn't know this yet, of course. And David is called to live in the court of the king. And as David comes to live in the court of the king, the king would be overtaken with rage. And as he's overtaken with rage, he would call for the harp player. And David was the most skilled harp player around. And, and he would call David in. And David would begin to minister unto the Lord. And as the anointing would flow through David's life, suddenly things would change in the atmosphere around Saul and that atmosphere would change until something stirred back up inside of Saul and Saul would try listen to me carefully Saul would try to then kill David because he that what was happening in him was resisting what was going on around him now listen to me and the, all Saul can remember about David listen to this carefully all that Saul can remember about David is David running before him because David would flee from Saul whenever he would go into these rages. Are you following me? David would get upset and flee as Saul would attack. Obviously, he would flee for his life. He didn't want to be stuck through with a javelin. He didn't want to be, want to be killed. And so he would run from Saul. Here's the problem for Saul at this moment. All he can see is David running from him. And Saul's afraid to face the giant. And since Saul is afraid to fight, face the giant, he's wondering how can somebody who won't even face me face a giant that I'm afraid to face? Are you with me? All he can see is David's past. Now, I'm trying to behave, but you gave me permission to preach. I'm preaching to somebody in this place tonight that all some people can see is your past. All they can see is your mistakes and your struggles and your sins and your weakness. As a matter of fact, all some people can do is remind you of your past. All they want to do is constantly make you remember, I was there, I know who you are, I know your junk, I know your stuff, I know all the bad things about you, and don't, I'm never going to let you forget that. Can I tell you, we've all had issues in our past. Everyone in this room has had an issue in their past. But the truth is, most all of us want one thing true, uh, to stay true. We want our past to stay in our past. But all David could be seen of Saul was who he was, not who David had become. You see, issues from our past want to return, but we need to keep them in our past. I don't know what your issues were. It could be, it could be lust. It could be anger. It could be addiction. Even though those things are now part of your past, most people deal with a constant struggle of a fear that one day that what you pushed into your past is going to come back into your present with a vengeance. I'm preaching truth now. And maybe you've made mistakes in your life that, that, that you don't think, well, maybe compare with that, but, but, but there's something in your past. That, here's what I wrote. Maybe you've, you've even messed up as a parent. I mean, everybody thinks you're a rock star at parenting, but in reality, you're holding on for dear life. And you're afraid that yesterday's mistakes are going to catch up with you somehow. Or could it have been that you were some kind of a bad leader somehow in your job, and in, in your life, some, where I, I've struggled with this at times in my life, and you're so terrified to try to go forward because you're afraid of leading someone else somewhere that you might get in trouble again. Preaching truth. Let me make it real clear. That's why I went those directions with the parenting and the leadership. We all carry issues from our past and every one of those issues make us feel unqualified for our present or even worse yet and maybe we're not unqualified but somehow we have become disqualified I'm preaching truth but remember God has a habit of picking people who others have written off Remember the secret to your future is not in your past. Listen to me. The secret to your future is not in your past, but it is rather in your present. And here's what I want you to get, and I, I'm not going to preach a super long tonight, but here's what I want you to get. I want you to get how did David respond when somebody who could only see him for his past tried to remind him of his past. How did David respond? What did he do that, that caused a shifting in the atmosphere? He wasn't even playing the harp this time, but he had to shift the atmosphere around him. How did David respond? Did he duck his head in shame and slink away? No. 
Did he go to listen to the giant's boastings and think about what could have been? No. What did David do? Now, here's what I want you to get in your Bibles. I'd love for some of you to underline some of this. Here's what David did when a man stepped up and said, I know who you are. I know your junk. I know your past. I know your fear. I know your struggles. This is what David said in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 34. We begin, but David, this word just get, has grabbed me. But David, what? Persisted. David did not give up because somebody reminded him of his failures. Half of us are living in fear all the time that somebody's going to come running up to us and say, I know what you did. I remember where you came from. Can I tell you something? Instead of wearing it like shame, we ought to put on a banner of grace and say, you're right. I was that, but now I'm a blood-bought child of God who he loves and whom he is well pleased. He said, I'm not giving up. I'm not leaving this tent until I have your permission to take hold of my future. I'm not giving up. I've got a word for somebody. I, I want you to know God gave me this word before I ever left home this morning. I've got a word for somebody. You need to keep persisting. You need to stop thinking that your past has overtaken your present and destroyed your future. And you need to shake yourself and arise again and march on for the glory of God. You need to do something about your situation. Preaching truth tonight. Look what he said. But David persisted. Look what he said to the king. I want you to know this. He says, I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club, and I rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Come on now, amen. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the Philistine too. Can I just preach a little expository sermon right there on that section for just a moment? That means I'm going to take it and break it apart for you a moment. Not only did David persist, but he said, let me tell you why I'm not giving up. He said, I'm not giving up because I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. Nobody rejoiced. In other words, he said, it might not seem grand, it might not look like much to somebody else, but I've been busy. I've been doing something. I have been responsible, and I have been growing. I've been about something of purpose. I've been about, am I making sense to anybody tonight? I've been about something of direction. I've been about something that is better. And I want to remind you of something at this point, that when David was watching his father's sheep and goats, he was already anointed to be king. He had already been called to something greater, but he was not sitting around waiting for his destiny. He said, I've not been waiting for something to happen. I've been making things happen. I've been doing something. I've been living on purpose. I've, I've been involved in my own life, and I'm, do, I'm building something. Because what he really was saying was this. My dad gave me a little bit of sheep, and I started caring for them until they turned into a flock. And I'm caring for them, and I want everybody to see that I might be anointed to be a king, but I'm not above doing what is necessary today to get where God's called me to get to now I'm sorry if I'm scaring you yelling so much tonight but I just feel to preach tonight here's what I here's what I, I, I wrote down he said I had listen he said I have not been sitting around waiting for my destiny I have been busy in the waiting are you hearing me I have been busy in the waiting because you can never lead a kingdom until you can lead a flock are you with me? And here's the truth that God gave me today. You can never lead the life you want until you can lead the life you have. Are you following what I'm saying? You can never live out there where you think you can live until you take control of where you are. So that's why I said you can never lead the life you want until you lead the situation you're in. You say, well, I'm out here and I'm working somewhere. This is not what I'm called to do. Well, I can remind you of the word. He that is faithful over the little things shall be given much. 
Well, I don't like where I am. Look, if you don't like where you are, start changing who you are so that you won't fit where you are anymore. Come on now. I don't have to make it practical. You don't like that shirt anymore? Just keep eating. You won't be able to wear that shirt anymore. Come on now. Amen. Just keep changing who you are. You start inputting the things of God into your life. You start inputting, and that garment of shame will no longer fit you anymore. That, that garment of abuse will no longer. You'll stand up and you'll say, I'm not who I used to be, and I won't take this anymore because I've been doing something in the waiting for my destiny. I've been waiting on God, and God's been doing something in me. And I feel this. What did he say next? I love what he said next. He said, I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. Now listen to what he said. He said, and when a lion and bear comes, not if, he said when. Can I tell you, there are always going to be attacks that are going to come against you in your future. They're going to come at the worst. Am I making sense to anybody tonight? I met somebody somewhere one day, and they, 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 were, they wanted to show me. They listened to my sermons, and they said, I, I can show you I listened to your sermons. They said, amen, amen, and amen. And then they said, and then they said, am I making sense to you today? I said, well, I guess you are listening, amen. But listen to me. There are always going to be attacks that come at the worst time. They're going to catch you off guard. Those things are going to, going to come to try to rob your joy steal your peace, to take away your purpose, to take away your direction, to cause you to lose what you've gained in the waiting. The attacks are going to come. But listen to me, you have to protect your present if you want a future. You have to protect where you've come to. You have to say, I'm not going back. I'm not losing ground. We're not going back around that mountain again. We're going to protect the progress that God has brought into our lives. We are determined to keep moving forward. Can I tell you how? I love to see, I told you I'm expositing on, on the scripture. L listen, listen to this. Can I tell you how David said he did it? Listen to what he said. He said, when a lion or bear comes, in other words, they're going to come, this is what I do. He said, I go after it with a club. Come on now. I go after it with a club. I'm trying to behave. Now listen to me. He said, I don't just go and say, oh, don't take the lion, and don't, ta or, don't take the lamb, and don't take my sheep. He said, if a lion comes in to attack, it's made a mistake because I'm not going to sit around. I'm not a shepherd who's not willing to die for my sheep. He said, I'm going to go after that future because those sheep represent my responsibility. And my responsibility over the little things is where I'm going to learn to be master over many things. And so I'm not letting the enemy steal my little thing because I have bigger things inside of me. Are you with me? And so he said, what I do is I grab a club. Now, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. Everybody watching, everybody listening, I am not telling you to beat somebody with a club in your life. <laughs> Unless it's the devil. And I don't care how related to him you think they are. They are not the devil. <laughs> but what I'm telling you is the devil has had free reign in your life, in your family, in our church, in our community, in our nation, and in the atmosphere around our world far long enough. And I love what David said. He said, battles are going to come. And I'll tell you, you know, I'll start him, I'll, I'll tell him, no, 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 you don't understand. I see you, lion. I see you, bear. But if he still persists, I grab a club because sometimes you got to get mad. And sometimes you got to fight. And sometimes you need to take your weapons of your warfare that are not not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, and you need to go out against the enemy and make up your mind. But it gets worse. Oh my goodness, it gets worse. Because he said, look, if just seeing that I have my weapon is not enough, 
See, a lot of those scared little uh, creatures would, would see he's coming with a stick and maybe they'd run off the wolves or, the, or, or, or whatever it was, those, those jackals in that area or whatever it was. But he said, when that lion looks at me and acts like he's not afraid of what I'm carrying, I, I love what he said next. He didn't say, well, I think I tried. He said, no, I love what he said. He said, when he doesn't give up, I beat him to death with a club that I grabbed. Some of you trying, I told you I was going to preach tonight. Some of you trying to be too dignified about this. Some of you are going, well, pastor, what does that mean in the scripture? What it means is you beat the devil out of the devil. Come on now, amen. <laughs> that you make up your mind that you're not going to let him. Some of you are going, Pastor Don, you're emotional tonight. Well, yes, I'm emotional tonight. I'm trying to tell you to get emotional. I'm trying to tell you to stop being emotional in pain and sorrow and grief and stand up for yourself and realize that God's weapons are mighty in your life and you can destroy the enemy but pastor Don I don't know how why don't you stop whining and start praising why don't you stop backing down and start standing up in prayer why don't you lift your voice up to God and begin to declare that it not by might nor by power but by my spirit I'll have my family back I'll have my freedom I'll have my joy I'll have deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost I have told, I'm telling you, I have, I, I have learned people in my life, that fat preacher's getting out of breath, come on now, I have learned people in my life that you better watch out certain things they do tell you you have gone far enough, come on now, amen, my mom gets this certain look on her face, oh my goodness, you better shut up when she does, come on now, <laughs> My wife starts acting a certain way, and she says a certain thing. And my mother-in-law, God help us all, if that right eyebrow goes up, you better run for the hills. Come on now, amen. Listen to me. I'm trying to tell you something. The devil needs to learn you're through putting up with his junk in your house. You not, are no longer who you were, and in your presence you're determining who you're going to become, and you have been given weapons of warfare to help you overcome by the blood of the Lamb. So you need to set your face. And when the devil shows up in your house again, you need to start fasting. Come on. Pastor Don, I don't understand. Well, let me just make it real plain to you. Push back your plate until God moves. Come on now. You need to start praying until God moves. We used to call it in the church getting a hold of the horns of the altar. In other words, I'm going to go into the presence of God and I'm not backing down. But Pastor Don, my family's going to think I'm crazy. Well, you've been crazy to put up with the junk you put up with long enough. Now stomp your feet, plant yourself, and say by the blood of the Lamb, my family will be free in the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on now. Amen. Give God a praise like he deserves. Amen. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. He said, I beat it to death. Glory to God. I said, that sounds like somebody from Dawsonville. Devil, you might attack me, but I have something in store for you. Listen to me. And what he says next basically is this. That this new challenge is going to be no different. I'm not afraid of the giant that's before me because I've been overcoming the giants that are behind me. Let me say that for you differently. If I can overcome my past and survive my present with God, my future is secure. Are you with me? Man, I feel that tonight. Now that's what you've got to get to. Get mad. Somebody said, Pastor Don, are you going to teach next week? Well, I don't ever know. But I felt like preaching tonight, and some of you can blame your neighbors. They looked at me and said, yes, you have permission. Here's what I want you to see. David said, enough's enough. Enough's enough. And I want you to watch what shifted. Watch this. The man who said, look, if you're afraid of me, there's no way you can defeat him. Suddenly, verse 37, it says, Saul finally consented. He said, all right, go ahead. He said, and may the Lord be with you. Now, you have to understand, 
this moment is not as simple as it seems. If David doesn't win, Saul loses everything. Are you following me? If the champion doesn't win, the people of the Philistines will now rule the community. So would he have just consented, well, go ahead then. No. There was something about the fire of David's present that told him the past was gone. Are you with me? I'm preaching to you. Somebody said, I felt like he was preaching to me. Can I tell you? I'm preaching to you. <laughs> the fire of your present is what's going to show that your past is behind you. Because your present proves that you are not your past and your present prepares you to go with God into your future. I am a child of God. I am loved of God. I am pleasing to God. I am not my past. And I will choose in my present to live in the truths of who he says I am. Are you following me at all? I will choose to live in the truth of who he says I am. And when the enemy comes, because he is going to come, he is going to attack, I will not stand back any longer in defeat. I will arise. And if he doesn't flee, then you better watch out, devil. You shouldn't have stirred me up because now I'm praying. Now I'm fasting. Now I'm getting in the word like never before. And I will have victory because my present is going to determine my future. Would you stand with me tonight? I'm going to make this declaration. I want you to see this. How many of you know that God chose David? How many of you know that? Amen. Do you think God made a mistake with David? God chose David. The same God chose you. God qualifies you. God qualifies you. The same God that chose David that equipped David chose you. Pastor Don, you don't know my story. You don't know apparently all of David's story. It only goes downhill from here. Come on, amen. But one thing David never forgot, the hills to which he had to look, the hope upon which he called. And even in the middle of his weariest, darkest, sinful moments, he never blamed others and blamed his past he said, it's my fault, and now I throw myself on the mercy of a living God. Why? Because I am his child. I am loved by him, and I am pleasing to him. God qualifies you, even when you feel disqualified. Even when you feel that there's no way that he can be pleased with you. Pastor Don, what have you been trying to say to me tonight? I've been trying to tell you, your past needs to stay in your past and your present if you'll serve Jesus and live by those three teachings that he loves you and that you're his child and he's pleased with you there's a better future